Hi, this is Jennifer Workmeister with Product Management for Adobe Analytics. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the new Report Builder add-in for Customer Journey Analytics to create and refresh reports using any data view, all from within Excel. Report Builder for Customer Journey Analytics is available for Excel on Mac, PC, and Web Office. Once installed, the add-in will appear in my home ribbon here. My organization is listed here at the top, and to switch organizations, all I have to do is click it. Today, I'm going to create a report on customer satisfaction scores. To begin creating a report, I'm going to select Create Data Block. This takes me to step one in creating my first data block. A data block is a distinct table in your report resulting from a single request. You may have multiple data blocks in a single Excel workbook. In this first step, I choose my data block parameters. First, I choose the cell location. Then I choose my data view, and then I select my date range. Report Builder has several convenient ways to create custom date ranges. First, I can type the dates directly into the field here. I can also use the calendar to select my dates. Below that, I have my drop-down menu with all my preset dates from Workspace. I'm going to start with a rolling date range, the last 90 days. Below, I can expand the rolling date range menu to see options for using date math to further customize my date range. Because I have chosen the preset date range the first 90 days, I see that the rolling dates below have already updated with the corresponding date math. From here, I can use the operators to get the exact date that I want. I have the option of start of, end of, or I can use a fixed day for my start or end date. I can choose start or end of current day, week, month, quarter, or year, plus or minus any number of days, weeks, months, quarters, or years. I can also use custom expressions. This allows me to create date ranges using date math with more than one operator. And as always, I always have the option to include or exclude today in my data. Now that I've shown you all the ways that you can create custom date ranges, I'm going to select one of my preset date ranges. Once I have set my data block parameters, I click next to go to the second step in creating my data block. Now I can go about building my table. All my components, dimensions, metrics, and filters are here. If you are used to seeing these components in Workspace, these should look familiar. To begin adding components to my table, I can either drag and drop them, or I can simply double click them to add them to the well. You can always reorder your components after they have been added. As I'm reordering my components, I can see that a preview of my data is appearing here in my worksheet, so I can see exactly what it's going to look like. Let's start with a very simple data block. I want to see how many people have given me each customer satisfaction score. Because this is my customer journey analytics data, I know that people includes people across the web, mobile, and the call center. Now that I have a data block in my spreadsheet, my options have updated here in the hub panel. These options will always update based on your selection and what next actions are available. Because I have selected a cell in my data block, I have the option to edit or refresh my data block. I also have the option to refresh all data blocks in the worksheet and to copy and paste my data block. Now that I have my data block, I see that I want to change it. I want to order the customer satisfaction scores from highest to lowest, and I also want to split out my metrics by people on the web, app, and call center separately. To edit this data block, I'll select Edit Data Block. I'm taken back to the first step, which allows me to change any of the parameters of my data block. I'm satisfied with these, so I'm going to click Next to make changes to my table. First, I'm going to add two more columns. To add filters to my data, I can double click a filter, and it adds it to the filters well. This filter will filter the entire data in the data block. So now that I'm thinking of this, I want to restrict this data block to just the United States. However, I can also apply filters to specific metrics within my data block. Here, I will add people on web, people in the call center, and people on the app. Great. Now, by mousing over this column, I can see the funnel icon indicating that filters have been applied to each of these metrics. Now let's look at our dimension. If I click the three dots and the funnel icon on my dimension, I will see that I have several options for how I want to display my dimensions. First, I see that there is a filter type. By default, it is set to most popular and is set to the top 10 rows. I can change the number of rows that I want to see by changing it here. Also, if for some reason I don't want to see the top 10, but maybe the next 10 after that, I can change the page. Changing this from 1 to 2 will show me not the top 10 rows, 
with the next 10 rows. That's rows 11 through 20. This is really useful if you want to create smaller data blocks or if you're running up against the 50,000 row limit. I can also filter my dimensions based on criteria, similar to the way that I could in Workspace. I can use familiar criteria, like contains the phrase or does not contain the phrase. For example, if I have a list of page names, I can make it so that only page names containing a certain department are included. The other very useful filter type is specific. Specific allows me to choose specific dimension items from my list. It also allows me to choose a list of items from a range of cells. That is what I'm going to do now to order my CSAT score from highest to lowest. I have already listed the CSAT score in the order that I want to see them down here. By selecting those cells, my data block will match itself to that order. This feature is really useful if you have a data block that is dependent on the output of another data block. Now I can click Finish to complete my data block. Great. This data block is just for the US though, but I want to create a report that duplicates this block for every country that I operate in so that I can see the changes in customer satisfaction based on location. To do this, I don't have to recreate my data block from scratch. I can simply copy and paste my data block again. Now I want to take advantage of the quick edit feature in the bottom right of the main hub panel. Quick edit allows me to edit one or more data blocks without going through the full data block creation process. With the quick edit panel, I can quickly change the data view, the date range, or the filters applied to one or more of my data blocks. To make changes to my pasted data block, I make sure that my selection is in the block that I want to change. Looking at the quick edit panel, I can see that the data view, the date range, and filters all reflect what is in my current selection. To change the country filter applied to the data block, I'll click the filters link. Here I see all my filters listed. I'll click the X to remove the United States and then I'm going to add Canada. Keep in mind that when you add a filter in this way, it applies the filter to the entire data block, not just a single column or row. One of the great things about the quick edit feature is that I can edit multiple data blocks at a time. Let's say that for some reason, the people on my app weren't being counted quite right, and now I want to update all my data blocks with a new filter. I can select multiple of my data blocks, and here again, you can see that the filters contained by all my data blocks are listed here. If I click on filters, I can see that the filters that are present in all of the data blocks are listed here under all selected data blocks. And the filters that are only present in one or more data blocks are listed here. But what I want to do is replace my people on app filter. To do that, I go to the replace tab. I select people on app and I select the one that I want to replace it with, People on App Revised. Quick Edit does not automatically refresh your data blocks with your edits. This allows you to make rapid edits across many data blocks without slowing down your workflow. To see your updated data, remember to click Refresh. Now that my data blocks are updated, I can save and send the report to my stakeholders. I hope you found this video useful and that it helps to get you started creating your own Report Builder reports for customer journey analytics. Thank you.